Hello and welcome back to another episode of Gear Toward Gear. My name is Sean and I'm so glad you're here because today we're taking a look at the first Kershaw knife that I've bought in probably three years, maybe more. Uh, and I'm excited about this one. I've carried it a bunch. I love it. And it is the da -da -da -da, Natrix and Copper. So I think pretty obvious. Uh, this has been a pretty popular knife and Hard to come by for a while. It's not brand new by any means, but um, these have been sold out in various places or back ordered. And I got one a couple of weeks ago and I'm digging it. So let's talk about the mini Natrix in copper. So let me talk to you first about Kershaw knives and kind of my experience with them. For about five to seven years, I would say, Everything that came out from Kershaw was a black blade, I'm sorry, a black handle and a silver blade and almost everything was speed safe assisted opening. And I just didn't like any of it. It was all very similar, very plain, and I don't like assisted knives personally. And so I was really just not into Kershaw's for a long, long time. Then they kind of switched gears a couple years ago and everything was black wash. Black wash blade, you know, black wash handle, um, again, everything's speed safe. And so I've just kind of been disenfranchised with, with Kershaw for, for quite a while and not excited about any of their new offerings uh, until I saw this. Not the Natrix series necessarily as a whole, but this particular model. Uh, the copper is a bonus, but really the size is what, what sold me on it. So this is the mini Natrix. Uh, they, they come in at 60 bucks. It's a Chinese made knife with an overall length of 6.5 inches, a handle length of 3.75 inches, and a blade length of 2.75 inches, which is just perfection for me in terms of blade length. I love that blade length. The blade is D2 steel, which is phenomenal. Love D2, don't have anything bad to say about it. And the D2 is gonna be a stone wash finish. It's a really fine stone wash. Um, a lot of times you see a really coarse stone wash which can look good on certain knives, but I do like this kind of fine grained stone wash that they did on the blade there. So I think that is a very attractive looking blade. Uh, speaking of which, they, they call this a drop point, which I guess by definition it is in that the point does drop, but it's kind of got, I don't know, for me it's kind of worn cliffy uh, in a good way. So I'm just digging the blade shape. Everything about it, I love the blade shape. Um, as you saw when I opened it, it's a flipper design and it is unassisted, thank the Lord. It is. Uh, it runs on bearings, it runs on Kershaw's KVT ball bearings and there's no speed safe and that just makes me happy. Um, don't like speed safe and I know a lot of the Kershaw Natrix series of knives are uh, assisted opening. I think there are some others that are not but I was super stoked to see that this was a manual, manual opening uh, flipper. So locking mechanism, it's gonna be a subframe lock. So the frame itself is copper, obviously, which is a very malleable um, uh, metal. And so they put the, the, the steel subframe lock in there to give it that strength. Uh, and it's got a built-in over travel protection. So no matter how hard you push on the subframe lock, it will never go beyond uh, flush with the scale. So that's nice. Um, there's, there's no liners. Uh, it's just solid copper scale on one side and the subframe lock on the other, uh, which is perfectly fine. It's a little heavy. Um, being copper, copper is a pretty heavy metal. Not like heavy metal, but <clears throat> literally heavy. And so being a small knife, you know, six and a half inches overall, it comes in at 3.7 ounces, but I kind of like the stoutness of it, to be honest with you. Um, I, I tend to prefer pretty lightweight knives but uh, in this configuration, uh, I don't know, it just feels substantial and, and I like that. Um, it's tip up carry, right or left. And so this is a left-handed friendly knife. So it's a flipper obviously, so that's gonna be right or left hand. Uh, and you can see clearly uh, your spot to swap the pocket clip from the right side to the left side. So if you're a lefty, this is a great option. <clears throat> the clip itself is a loop over very deep ride pocket clip. Um, 
straight out of ZT. Like this is totally a zero tolerance pocket clip. They probably just took it from the factory and put the Kershaw logo on it. Um, but I'm digging the clip. It's uh, small, it's unobtrusive, it carries really well, and I like it quite a bit. It does have a backspacer, which I don't love the backspacer necessarily, but I can get over it. It looks to be plastic. I don't think it's G10, but just a, a black kind of partial backspacer that runs about half the length of the knife there. Uh, so it does have a backspacer. As far as fit and finish, really well done. I, I mean, the, the machining and contouring on the copper is really nicely done. All the hardware is recessed. The blade centering is perfect. Um, well, let me rephrase that. It's not perfect. It's slightly off to the right. And in every review or blog post that I've read about this knife is that they're all slightly off to the right. And the reason for that is that this subframe lock is just pushing in that direction constantly um, to, to maintain that lock up when you do flip it. And so it's just barely off to the right, but in no way inhibits the action whatsoever. It just shoots out every time with consistency and authority. And so I'm digging that. Um, the subframe lock or, or the liner that you actually have to disengage on the lock is, is chamfered, if you can see that, if I can get in really close. It's not a sharp edge, and so it's really easy and comfortable to get your thumb in there to disengage that, uh, that subframe lock. So I'm digging that as well. Ergonomically, for me, it's perfection. Um, nice forward finger choil, three finger grip for me and my extra large hands. And the pocket clip, as I've mentioned on a previous uh, knife that I reviewed, I'm not sure which order I'm gonna post these, so um, you may have already seen this, but the pocket clip just kind of naturally rests um, in the natural contour of my hand. And it's got a, a nice little thumb ramp with a, a bit of jimping. And it is functional, not overly aggressive, but you do have some jimping up top. So it just kind of melts into my hand and I really like the overall shape and, and feeling in my hand. So a very comfortable knife. Uh, for a quick size comparison, and again, I'm not sure which order I'm gonna post these videos in. So depending on that, you may not have seen a review yet, but this is a Ontario Knife Company Wraith. And they are basically identical in every dimension. Overall length, handle length, blade length. This is a really lightweight 1.6 ounce knife, um, but almost identical in dimensions. The one thing that's odd about this knife and the way it was packaged is that it comes in a Ziploc bag inside of the standard Kershaw box. And that's not necessarily an issue, but I've never received any copper products that were not vacuum sealed to keep all the oxygen out. Um, and why would you want to do that? Well, you want to do that so that the consumer uh, gets a pristine uh, copper finish and it will patina you know, to their liking based on you know, the, how much exposure to oxygen, how much you know, oils in your fingers, things like that. And I'm looking forward to that patina, don't get me wrong. I'm not upset that it wasn't vacuum sealed, but I'll bring in a couple other copper products here. They're all flashlights. There's a Olight, there's a, an older Lumen Top, and a, uh, another Olight. This is the i3T I've carried quite a bit. And so you can see you know, how dark these things can get. And in comparison to the Mini Natrix, it's quite bright compared to the other three. Even this one that I've only had for probably a month um, has picked up some really nice patina from, from carrying and using it. So I do like the patina and I, and I want it to happen. It's just odd to me that it didn't come vacuum sealed because it wouldn't take much more effort to do that. And if you just wanted to have one pristine, either just an extra one, or maybe you want to give it as a gift, you know, at a later date, it's going to start to patina the second it's, it's manufactured. So oxygen's going to get into the bag and into the box. And so it's not as bright. Like this light, for example, when you unbox it and it's vacuum sealed, is probably twice as bright and kind of polished looking than the, than the Natrix. And, and part of that, in, in Kershaw's defense, is that the Natrix um, has a kind of a stonewash finish to the copper itself. So it's not a smooth um, copper, but I just thought that was interesting, not of, of much consequence, 
because I want it to patina and I'm okay with it. I just thought it was interesting and I thought I'd point that out. Um, so that's it. That's my review of the Kershaw Mini Natrix and Copper. And please do guys, let me know what other newer Kershaw knives out there you guys really dig. Um, Cause after, you know, using this for, for a number of days and carrying it, it's kind of reignited my former love for Kershaw. Um, and I'd be interested to try out some other models that you guys uh, could possibly recommend. So please do leave those in the comments. Again, if you're a first time viewer, please do subscribe for future content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.